Hi there and welcome to another portion of infotainment. This video counts towards your 5 a day. Which secondary antagonist is more evil than the main antagonist? Todd in Breaking Bad. The way he is so polite and cordial to people is terrifying. It's like he read about being nice in a book. But didn't quite get it. Burke from Aliens. At least you don't see the xenomorphs ducking each over for a goddamned percentage. Yeah. The xenomorphs are just living out their life cycle. Being their best selves. Finding their bliss. Mrs. Lovett gaslights a mentally ill neighbor she has a crush on to murder people who inconvenience her and to increase her profits. She's way more evil than Sweeney Todd, even though she never murders anyone herself. That seems stressful to write. How about a shave? A stylish? Trimming of the hair? A soothing skin massage? Scott Evil. He actually went through with the frickin' sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their frickin' heads. I'd say number two because he brought about VirtuCon's control over cable companies in 38 states in Dr. Evil's absence. I can't think of anything more evil. Plus he built a factory that makes miniature models of factories. Just pure evil. Joseph Goebbels, Joseph Mangala has entered the chat. True story. My dad's lifelong best friend's dad was in the camp with Mangala as a Jewish prisoner. He was spared his life because he was able to speak fluent German, Polish, Russian, and English and was able to communicate orders, directions from guards to prisoners and be a general translator in the camp. He ended up getting a severe infection in his throat and was actually saved by Mengele with an emergency surgery and tracheotomy. Stephen Warren from Django Unchained. From the movie, I got the impression that Candy was an idiot but a useful one and that it was Stephen who ran Candyland with an iron fist. He ran manipulation circles around Candy. He was the one who put Hildy in the box when Candy, Django and Schultz arrived because she tried to run away. Candy's sister seemingly was there just to be a rich lady who liked to throw status parties and do nothing more than that. I don't see her lifting a finger to do anything. So, Stephen and not her was the one giving orders on how to run the place and how to punish the slaves while Candy was away. That scene in the parlor, it was Stephen who was sitting in the master's chair, and drinking the high-end liquor while Candy sat in the other seat, leaning in like child listening to the parent. You just know that if Stephen wanted to, he could have easily killed Candy and run away. But why would he when he could play dumb and run the empire? Candy was evil but Stephen was even more so. Azula from Atla. Azula is a much better and infinitely more interesting villain than Ozai, but I wouldn't say she is more evil. Ike man, it was her idea to burn down the Earth Kingdom so I'd at least put them on equal footing. To be fair, Azula was most like Darth Vader, Ozai was more like Palpatine. Count Rugeen vs Prince Humperdinck and the Princess Bride. Dude had a hidden torture dungeon called the Pit of Despair. Slightly more evil than stuck up rich boy playing political games. I agree with this. Movie Rugeen was more sinister. Though, to be that guy. In the novel it was Humperdinck's dungeon and it had 5 levels of dangerousness. Nothing was on the most dangerous level, level 5, until he captured Wesley. Also in the novel, the reason Humperdinck wanted to start a war with Gilder was because they sent him a bald woman, wearing a wig, obviously, to be his bride. It also was the reason why he wanted to marry the most beautiful woman in his own kingdom. Novel Humperdinck did many things and was evil as poop. In Gotham, I think Victor's ass was way worse than Carmen Falcone. So can kill him now? No Victor make him a cheese toasty. Yes, kill him. Gunter from Adventure Time. He is the most evil being in all of existence. I stopped watching Adventure Time a while ago, but if this is actually true I guess I best catch up. It's true funnily enough when Marceline's dad said no you can't suck my soul it was foreshadowing. That's all I'm going to reveal though. Bellatrix Lestrange was cold. Bella is impulsive and sadistic, whereas Voldemort is grandiose and domineering. Voldemort wouldn't physically violate someone, he would just kill, but he would order his minions to do whatever they wished, knowing that they would enjoy doing so and thus become more loyal to him. Bella is exactly the sort of minion who would physically violate a kidnapped victim, and enjoy doing it, and become more loyal to the Lord who let her do it. So, for that matter, are Fenrir Greyback and some other antagonists of the series, notably Dolores Umbridge and possibly Argus Filch. Dolores Umbridge. I'm fairly certain the reason she tops these lists of evil villains so often is because everyone on Earth can relate to dealing with someone like her. It can be a teacher, a boss, a relative, 
whatever, but we all know someone who's just that much of a runt. Voldemort is a powerful evil wizard. Umbridge is just a ducking clitoris. Ridley from Metroid. Despite being easily the series' most iconic villain, and Samus' eternal arch-rival mother effer ate her parents right in front of her, he's rarely ever the in-game main antagonist slash final boss, and usually works under people like Mother Brain. But Ridley is one savage and evil mother fricker. Metroid is super freaking dark when you read into the lore, that's not even the most fricked up thing Ridley did to Samus and it's strongly implied multiple times that Samus suffers from debilitating PTSD because of Ridley. I reckon anyone would have crippling PTSD if they fight a space dragon that ate their parents. Then when you think it's dead and you're doing your thing it comes back as a robot space dragon. Carnage. Sure, Spider-Man has a massive rogues gallery and there isn't really a primary or secondary antagonist but when you think of main villains it usually comes under Goblin or Venom. Both have their own motivations that lead to a lot of people dying. Not Carnage though. Carnage just wants to kill everything and everyone. He lives and breathes murder. Cassidy is an absolute psychopath and giving him that hellish symbiote was a mistake. Wasn't Carnage created specifically so Venom would look less evil by comparison? Like Venom was so popular they kinda had no choice but to turn him good? The Knave of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland total manipulator who turned the slightly mean Queen of Hearts into a total homicidal maniac. I was thinking Alice in Wonderland total was some kind of reboot. Total Recall, Wonderland. Tuco Salamanca. He was just bat poop crazy. Also shout out to the Salamanca twins. Their only intention was to kill and seek vengeance. I dunno. I reckon Gus could teach him a fring or two about being evil. The really scary thing about Gus is how likable he is when you first meet him. He actually feels like a pretty safe option at first, unlike the Salamancas who were clearly bad news from the first time you see them. What would have been your answer or question? Leave it in the comments below. Slap that like and subscribe button for more, and check out the link in the video description for even more answers. Peace out, and catch you in the next video.